Good morning, church. It is so good to see you all this morning. My name is Daniel Wilson. I'm one of the pastors here in our life together at Assurance, and we are grateful to be in worship with you on this beautiful Sunday morning. If you're visiting with us for the first time this morning, we have a couple of things for you as you leave this space. You'll see a table on the left-hand side there. There's some ink pens. We'd love for you to take one or two of those as our way of saying thanks for choosing to worship with us this morning. We acknowledge that ink pens aren't all that exciting, but these are particularly special and awesome ink pens. So uh, everybody grab a couple of those as you uh, leave this space. You'll also see a banner there, which may be even more important than the ink pens. And on that banner is a QR code that says Connect Card. And that Connect Card is particularly important because it's a great resource. We use it regularly here at Assurance as a way of getting more connected, of growing in Jesus and going in service. Uh, That can be used to uh, explore more ways of connection here at Assurance, either through membership or baptism or being a part of a a study group or uh, an opportunity to go and serve might also choose to use that Connect card if you just want to have a chat with Pastor Josh and I. We would love to treat you to coffee or lunch or whatever works best for your schedule just to hear what God is up to in your heart and to share a little bit about what God is up to here at Assurance. So grab some ink pens, use that Connect card, uh, and welcome. Uh, Also, a special word of welcome to those who join us online this morning. We see you, we know that you are here, and we give God thanks for the technology that allows us to bridge the gap between these walls and wherever you find yourself this day. So to all who gather here, both in person and online, we are thankful for you and it is our hope and prayer uh, that you feel God moving this day in a deep and meaningful way. We have just a couple of quick announcements for you this morning as we begin our time together. Um, I cannot believe that we are already sharing this first one uh, so soon in the new year, but Uh, Lent is coming, and we want you to mark your calendars for our combined Fat Tuesday and Ash Wednesday gathering. On Wednesday, February 14th, uh, we'll get together here in this space for a pancake supper. We'll also celebrate the imposition of ashes as we begin the season of Lent together. Uh, We're also really excited. We confirmed late last week that um, we are also launching... That night, a Bible study opportunity on Wednesday evenings for uh, the season of Lent, and would love for you to consider being a part of that if your schedule permits. Uh, This is a series, are you ready for this? It's a series called Dare to Be Daniel. (laughs) Not this Daniel, not this Daniel. We're, right, we're going to set our sights higher than this Daniel or that Daniel, uh, and we're going to look toward the biblical Daniel. Uh, Francine Speziali is going to lead that study. It's six weeks and will carry us through the season of Lent. It's a wonderful study, one that I was a part of a number of years ago, and I know that it will be well received here in this space. So mark your calendars for February 14th uh, to come and enjoy dinner, uh, to receive ashes, and to enter into the season of Lent together. Uh, Speaking of groups, just a reminder that there are a number of groups that are starting or have just begun. It's not too late to jump in on some of those. I would love for you to scan that QR code, uh, which will take you to a full list of the groups that are happening uh, here at Assurance. Also a link in the e-news that went out this morning, so you can access that same link uh, that way. Uh, There are many things happening here at Assurance, and we give God great thanks for those. And just encourage you to be in prayer about... Uh, growing deeper in Jesus and going in service here in this place. That is all of our announcements this morning, and so I invite you as you're able to stand as we join together in our call to worship. Here we are, Lord. You have seen us and known us from before the beginning. Here we are, Lord. Jesus, you have called us to this place. Here we are, Lord. Gracious Holy Spirit, inspire our hearts to live with continued courage and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please remain standing as we sing our opening hymn together?
Amen. You may be seated. Let us go before our God in prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of this, a new day, and for your faithfulness, and for your unfailing love for us, O oh God. We stand amazed at the number of ways that you reveal yourself to us each and every day through simple, random acts of kindness, through handshakes and hugs that we receive and experience in this place, through music that speaks to our soul, through the proclamation of your word. God, you are so, so good. As we gather here in this space, O oh God, we bring with us a wide variety of things. For some, we come with great joy. And for others, we bring things that are heavy. But God, you know what weighs on our hearts and minds. It isn't necessary for us to speak those things to voice because you know them before we even speak them. And so we pause for just a brief moment in time here in this space, and we lift those things to you now. God, hear these, all of our prayers, and feel our heart's desire, God, to know you more. For we want to grow more deep in you. And it's our desire to go in service. To be rooted in your word. Connected to one another. God, we are so thankful for all that you do for us. And the many blessings that you pour out upon us each and every day. And so we gather here to give back to you a piece of that, to return thanks, to celebrate, to bring honor and glory to your name. So God, draw us close to you, pour your spirit upon this place and all who gather here. For those who join us online this day, O oh God. May we be the people you've called us to be. God, we love you with our whole hearts. And we lift our voices to you as we pray all these things in the name of Jesus. He taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
This morning, as we celebrate generosity, uh, we celebrate a person, uh, a young man whom you all have seen in and around this space periodically, but uh, a person who is generous with time, energy, resources, and uh, keeps Pastor Josh and I laughing uh, pretty regularly. But this morning, we celebrate a young man named uh, Connor Rose. I think we have a picture of him back there. Do we have a picture of him back there, Hal? There he is. This is Connor. You've seen him back in the uh, tech booth uh, from time to time. He is uh, part of our production team here at Assurance. And we were so excited, Pastor Josh and I, on Christmas Eve as we were killing some time in between services. And Connor shared with us that he had a desire to join the church officially. He said, but I don't want to be up in front of people. We said, that's okay. So this morning during 945, we went live on location. We kicked it back to Pastor Josh in the sound booth, uh, and Connor joined the church officially this morning from the sound booth. And we're just so thankful for him uh, and the example that he sets uh, as he is generous with his time, energy, resources. Uh, And we are just so thankful to be a part of this faith community um, who uh, celebrates these types of uh, people in the ways that we are genero- generous, not just through money, but with prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. And so just wanted to celebrate that with you this morning, even though Connor is not here at this service today. Uh, you have seen him. He is here uh, when Hal or uh, Sam are not available to be here with us, and sometimes even when they are here. And so next time you see Connor walking around, grab him and uh, say welcome to Assurance officially. Uh, but again, we celebrate that generosity is about so much more than money. Uh, it's so much more than finances, but is indeed how we live our lives and how we share our time, our energy, and our resources. And so we just give God thanks to be a part of this faith community where you all take that seriously uh, and do such a fantastic job of living generous lives. And so we continue to give God thanks for you and for that. Uh, And as a reminder this morning, if you do desire to partner with us, uh, particularly financially, you can use the generosity boxes that are uh, in the Welcome Center. Uh, or you can use the online giving platform for that as well. But if you are feeling inclined uh, to dive deeper or to uh, explore what it looks like to live more generously in any of those five areas, Pastor Josh and I would love to have a conversation with you about that. So for all these things, we give God thanks, uh, and we return thanks to God in prayer this day. Let's pray. Almighty God, you have given to us abundantly. And so this day, we give back to you. As generously as we know how, God, we give to you through prayers, presents, gifts, service, and witness. God, in whatever gift is given and whatever form it is given this day, God, may you receive it. And may it be used not for our good and our glory, but for you and the good of your kingdom, O God. Use these gifts as they are offered this day in whatever forms they are given. For we love you with our whole heart, O God, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen.
just what they want to see. You will see the things that never die. You will know and recognize by simple childlike faith the priceless truth that others will deny.
Good morning, church. So good to be with you today. My name is Josh Kurtz. I'm one of the pastors here in our life together. Tamara Virgie, thank you so much for that reminder and for that beautiful, beautiful song. Um, We are in a mini-series right now called Credo. Uh, Credo is a word, a Latin word, that means, I believe, but more than mental assent or checking some boxes, uh, Credo means I give my heart to I give my life to this. And in my former church, there was a gentleman in our community that was paralyzed from the waist down and would always worship with us in a wheelchair. And when the time for the Apostles' Creed or any of the other creeds of the faith came where we would invite folks to stand, Robert would place both hands over his heart in a sign of solidarity for standing and for giving his heart to the creed uh, and to the person and work of God that is found within the words of the creed. And so today I want to invite us to enter into Robert's posture of giving our lives something greater than ourselves. I believe, we believe, giving our lives, giving our hearts to God. So I want to invite you to remain seated today to place both hands over your heart and let us enter into a time of reaffirming our faith through the Apostles' Creed together. If you're worshiping with us online, we invite you to do the same thing this morning with us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Credo. I, we believe. We give our lives. Thank you so much, Robert, if you're worshiping with us online today for that reminder and the posture of giving our hearts to something greater than just ourselves. We believe. We believe as people of faith, and yet sometimes we can... Forget what we need to remember. We can forget the things that we need to remember, but we also remember the things that we should forget. Anyone forgetful here in the the worship center today? Maybe a show of hands online as well. Do you forget certain things? Like where you put your keys or um, what your significant other told you to get at the grocery store? Or what you were supposed to do next. We are forgetful people. We can suffer from spiritual amnesia as well. To forget the things that hold us together, that bind us together. We remember though what we should forget. Sometimes we hold on to the things that God is inviting us to lay down. That God has invited us to lay down a long, long time ago. And yet we continue to hold on with those things things, those memories of the past. We remember what we should forget, and we forget what we should remember, what we should hold on to with our core of of who we are. My junior year of high school, I took honors chemistry. Mistake number one and mistake number two. Mistake number one, honors. Mistake number two, chemistry. In my junior year of high school, I found myself in honors chemistry class struggling. Struggling with the periodic table. Struggling with equations that just didn't make sense. The struggle was real, as the kids say today. Really real. So real that I was failing chemistry, but there was a a ray of hope in my future because my chemistry teacher decided to give an open book test one day. Anybody in here love an open book test, right? (laughs) Praise be to God for the open book tests. 
The problem was I didn't even understand the information that was in my chemistry textbook. (laughs) So the time for the test came and the questions were there and I was confused from the get-go. Looking at the table of context, the, 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 the index, uh, trying to, to find uh, a context for all of these figures that I knew nothing about, it was foreign to me. The test came and, and went. I was a nervous wreck. And a couple of days later, I got this grade. Yeah, in red as well. It was bad. I remember that feeling, that whole semester of just feeling like a failure. And I was in the grocery store a couple of weeks ago, y'all, and somehow this memory came back into my mind and into my spirit of failing the open book test in honors chemistry class and almost failing the entire semester. Thanks be to God for my chemistry teacher, Merrill Hurley, who helped raise my grade a bit with extra credit and with a willingness to come and and work, but I knew nothing about chemistry. And yet in Publix grocery store a couple of weeks ago, standing in line, I thought about this memory that I should have let go a long time ago. And yet it continues to rise within my spirit. So much so that I I began to think, "Well, well, maybe I'm bad at other things. Maybe I just should walk around with a shirt that says F. Fail, fail, fail. Why do we hold on to the things that we should forget? And we forget the things that we should remember. How was your 2023? As you reflect back on your previous year, what were some moments or some times within your previous year that you enjoyed, that you were grateful for? Maybe you were surrounded by certain people. Maybe there was a feeling of being close to God. Maybe it was a a sunrise or a sunset, a moment that you encountered. Maybe a significant mark along your journey of faith or your life. What are the things that you remember that bring you joy and that brought you closer to God in 2023? I'm trying to focus more on reflecting on past moments that brought joy instead of past moments with red-letter grades that say F on them. I'm training for a marathon. I want to go ahead and name that as a way to accountability uh, partner with you all. May 18th, I'm going to run the New River Marathon in Ashe County. Training with some folks here in the church, but I'm also training with someone that's very near and dear to my heart, and that's my youngest son, Micah. Uh, Micah has picked up on running with me, and we have a greenway space out in the front of our yard that we can run around the sidewalk together at different paces. Uh, Sometimes Micah likes to walk. Sometimes he likes to run. Sometimes I like to walk. Sometimes I like to run. But we do it together, and he cheers me on, I cheer him on, and we have called these our joy jogs. In 2024... I want more joy jogs. Intentional time with my son, running together, cheering one another on, remembering and holding on to that, putting that time in my calendar to make that time for the joy jogs. That's something I want to hold on to, to propel me forward beyond the marathon that is ahead. And yet so often we focus on the F's the failures, the fail, failings, that we begin to internalize these within our spirit and our soul, and we think that we failed, that we're messed up, that we're too broken and too far gone, instead of focusing on the fruit. Our focus oftentimes determines our future, church. What are you focusing on? What are you pouring yourself into? What are you fixing your eyes on so that you can live into the God-preferred present and the God-preferred future that God would have for you today, tomorrow, and beyond? Our focus determines our future. And the creed, the creeds of the faith, help us to focus. They help us 
to focus on what is most important, on the foundation of our faith. Pastor Daniel gave us a wonderful word last week. If you have not had a chance to worship with us last week, I invite you to worship with us again this week by listening to that sermon, to being a part of that worship experience, because the creeds shed light on the foundation of our faith. And the foundation of our faith is not a dead God, but a living God that is at work in our lives right here, right now, before us, behind us, all around us and within us right now. The creeds help us to properly focus. To focus on what is most important. Upon what matters most. And it has a way of reorienting us so that we might truly believe. We might truly give our hearts, give our lives a new this day to a God who loves us and who is at work in and through all of us. Where we focus determines our future. And so I want us to focus on some Scripture today from Matthew's Gospel. This is a turning point in the relationship with Jesus and His disciples as Jesus is taking His closest friends, His twelve, to Caesarea Philippi. Caesarea Philippi is a place that Jews of the day would not have gone. It was a place and a territory that was known as Gentile territory. Off limits for Jewish, Jewish folk. People would not want to be in that territory. It's kind of like behind enemy lines per se. And in Caesarea Philippi, there were all these types of idol worship going on. There were sacrifices that were being made to varieties of gods. Animal sacrifices that were taking place. It was a place of idol worship that was so foreign. And yet Jesus, of all people, with His disciples, finds Himself in this place, uncharted territory. And he has a conversation with his disciples in the 16th chapter. He asks them this question, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And his disciples started to reply, give the laundry list of information that they had been hearing from the community and from the suburbs and all of the, the places around them. Well, some Jesus say that you're John the Baptist. Others say the great prophet Elijah, and still others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. This laundry list of what they have heard, their ear to the ground of who Jesus is. But then Jesus flips the question, and more directly to his friends, he says, But what about you? What about you? You is accentuated here in the Greek. You is an invitation that we want to see with an exclamation point. You! What about you? Jesus said. Who do you say I am? How we answer that question changes everything. Who do you say that I am? Jesus is doing some DTR in Caesarea Philippi, for those of you who are not familiar with DTR, Jesus is seeking to define the relationship. To see what His disciples, His followers, His friends think of Him. And He doesn't just want to hear what the community has said about Him, or what they think He is, but who the disciples think He is. What is this defining moment going to look like? And I really wonder... We don't get it in Scripture whether there was silence, whether the disciples were looking at one another curiously or looking at the, the sky or looking around them at all of the idol worship that was taking place in Caesarea Philippi. What happened? Well, all of a sudden we, we hear a response. And that response comes from Peter. Simon Peter, the boisterous, the, the loud one, said... Jesus, you're the Son of the living God. You are the Messiah. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Messiah meaning anointed one, chosen one, the one that is claimed by God, the Son of the living God, 
The firstborn of all creation. God with us in the flesh. This is the response that Simon Peter utters from his lips. And I'd have to imagine with gusto and with grit. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon Peter, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. You are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Just as Tamara so beautifully sang this scripture over us today. Peter has a new name. A new name and a new purpose. That Peter is a rock. He is a part of the rock. He is a part of the church. Peter rocks. And so do you. All who proclaim Jesus as Lord of our lives, you rock as well. You are called to be a rock. You rock, you. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor or look at somebody near you today and tell them, you rock. You rock. You rock. Everybody rocks. Yes. You rock, online community. You do. You rock. And I love in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, we get this image of what it means to truly be rocks that rock. 1 Peter 2, verse 5 says, You yourselves are being built like living stones into a spiritual temple. You are being made into a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through who? Through Jesus Christ, Messiah, the Anointed One, the Living Son of God. You rock. You do. I need a volunteer today. Would anybody be willing to come up with me? For a moment. Micah, you going to do it, man? All right, come on up. This was not staged or planned at church. So, Micah, come on up, buddy. Um, this is good because you, you've been cheering me on to help run my race. So I want to I invite you into an experiment today. You ready? You wave to the, the church community, to our friends? Yeah, good job. Online community as well. They see you too. All right. So uh, you rock, man. And a single rock is an important part of the story. Um, but single rocks can easily be moved, can't they? Like a single stone that's small enough can be moved. So uh, can you tear that sheet of paper in half, my boy? Whoa! Yeah. All right. Tear it all up. That's good. All right. Perfect. We're going to tear it up some more. Excellent. You, it is easily moved. But here, now I have, I have another question for you. So... Stones that are stacked or rocks that are repeated and stacked on top of one another, um, they're, they're a, a lot tougher to move. And so uh, can you tear that book in half? <laughs> I can move the paper. <laughs> Single paper, right? But all of them together, that's really hard, isn't it? Yeah. That's all I needed for the experiment. Can we give Micah a round of applause? You can go and sit back down with me. In so many ways, the life of faith is about how we live into it together. Uh, when we're a single stone that can be easily moved, we can trip up, we can fall. But when we are stones that are stacked together, on top of one another, attached to the firm foundation, which isn't Peter, but it's Jesus, the firm foundation, the rock of us all. When we are attached to the foundation and also attach ourselves to one another and hold fast to God and hold fast to one another, cheering one another on to run the race, that is something that's hard to move. Rocks can, can do some serious damage if we take them and throw them at others or throw them at buildings or throw them at windows, I've learned from previous experience. <laughs> but rocks that are attached to the firm foundation, rocks that are stacked together 
in love, holding fast to one another, that's hard to move. That's hard to pull down. And in a world that would love to divide us, church, in a world that would love to bring discord and division, in a world that craves detachment, where we pull out our phones and we end up looking at certain things while the world and life goes on, God, help us. We're called to be a people that build one another up in love, that are fixed to the firm foundation, which is Jesus Christ. The rock that holds us through the storms, through the challenges, through the heartaches and pains of life. I love that our young people in the grow zone have taken it up upon themselves to think about the stones that they're stacking in their lives. Miss Tina and our awesome Kidmen team have been leaning into focusing on things that they want more of in the year ahead. Giving God thanks for the things they've experienced and seen. They've created their own altar. They've stacked some stones on repeat. If you haven't seen it, they've glued these cups together and they are available for all to see so that you can take a look at some of the things our young disciples are thankful for. When we stack things on repeat in Jesus' name and fix ourselves to the firm foundation of faith in Jesus, it has a generational impact. Amen? A generational impact. Our lives... These kids' lives, our life together, are dependent upon the cornerstone, Jesus. But they're also dependent upon how we love and build one another up and not tear one another down. Attaching ourselves to Jesus and seeking to hold one another's hands in a world that so often divides. Jesus says to His disciples, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. These keys for all that say Jesus is Lord are gifted to you, to me, to Peter, all of us that are willing to answer that question with boldness and humility that Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Suit up. You're on the team. You have the keys. You are a part of this stone stacking body that is invited to be attached to the firm foundation and loving and holding one another together in love in a world that desperately hungers for that real agape Jesus Christ firm foundation based love. And so today, I want to invite you to think about what you need to hold on to. What do you need to hold on to today? Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a a statement of faith. Maybe it's looking at and speaking with gusto the creed that sometimes we so easily bypass and recite and say often and everywhere that it just becomes something that we do instead of who we deeply are. What do you need to hold on to today? And then, what do you need to let go of? Maybe there's a bad habit. Maybe there's a a difficult relationship Maybe there are things that you're telling yourself that just aren't true and that you should have let go long ago. Like an F in chemistry class for an open book test. Still feels like yesterday. God, I need to let that go. The trivial things that trip us up, what do you need to let go of? What do you need to to hold on to? Because God believes in you. And not just belief as cognitive assent, but belief as credo. God credos you. God gives God's heart for you. Think about that. God gives God's heart for you. God gives God's life for you in Jesus. The Messiah, the Son of God, the One who comes to walk amongst us. The One who will die a sinner's death on a cross 
Because of His great love for you and for me, God believes in you. God gives God's heart for you, church. For me. For all. All of creation. For all this world. God credos you. And I'm reminded today and always that words create worlds. The things that we say, the things that we speak, create worlds. We don't need to just be wordsmiths, but we need to be people that walk in those worlds that we're speaking. That's what I love about Jesus. Jesus doesn't just come to speak words. He comes to walk it out, to live it out, and to show us the way. Today and always, I want to invite us to renew our faith through the creed, but also to think about a personal creed for our lives. What are we believing in with all our hearts, holding fast to in the midst of storms that rage amongst us, within us, and all around us? Who are we becoming? Who are we called to be right here and right now? I love that next week our youth, our pilgrims, our confirmation class for this year that have been journeying for over a year together will profess their faith in Jesus and say yes to His church. We get to be a part of that amazing work that God is doing here in this community as we celebrate our young people and their willingness to say yes to Jesus And yes to the church, the stones continue to stack. We continue to attach and grow and go in love. Next week we have someone within our community that will also be sharing his personal creed with us. Inviting us to think about our personal creed as well in relation to the creeds that we speak and we seek to live into day after day. Church, I truly believe that the best is yet to come. And that we are called to be a community that while we might not think alike, while we might have different tendencies, while we might have different preferences, that there's something really powerful when we come together and we are stacked by the Holy Spirit to be a living, breathing, moving body that celebrates God's work in each person in all of creation. The stones continue to stack. The rocks will continue to cry out. We're a part of something bigger than ourselves. Thanks be to God. Let's give our lives anew this day to our living God who believes in us and who has given His life for us. Pray with me. God, our help in ages past and our hope for all the years to come. We thank You that You are our chief cornerstone. And when the winds of change and the sands of time grow dim, You remain our firm foundation. Lord, we give our lives to You again, sitting with that question that You asked Your disciples in Caesarea Philippi. You asked Your disciples in Huntersville today or wherever we're worshiping online, who do You say that I am? May our response to that question be not just the words that we speak, but the lives that we live the calendars that we create, the values that we hold, the visions that lead us. Thank You that You are our rock and our Redeemer. And so lead us, Lord, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For Yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever always and everywhere. Stack us, Lord, in Your love as we stand firm on You, our firm foundation.
In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand as you are able for our closing song. Um, and Hal, if you don't mind, just jump into the next slide. Um, so on this piece, Whitney is going to be leading us, and we will be, uh, when you see um, words in parentheses, um, then that is us. We are echoing um, what Whitney is doing. So. <laughs> the Son. We believe in Christ the Son. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We are the church and we stand as one. We are the church and we stand as one. You rock. <laughs> you do. And when rocks are stacked on repeat in Jesus' name and fixed on the firm foundation, we cannot be moved. We go forth from this place to share God's love, to see God's love, to live into with all our hearts the creeds of the faith that hold us together because they point us to our living God. Go forth from this place to love God and love your neighbor. Amen.